What's up YouTube? Hope you are doing fine. In this DaVinci Resolve color grading tutorial, we are going to create that dark moody cinematic look which I promised and you saw in my cinematic video and it's not going to be really complicated and we are just going to use a layer mixer technique in order to create this look. So no more talking and let's jump into the DaVinci Resolve and start the tutorial. So I've already imported my footage into the DaVinci Resolve as you see here and now let's start the color grading process. I have created the nodes already so we do not waste any time here. The first node is noise reduction, then the HDR node, then the conversion node which we convert the color space and then the lift and gamma and gain and after that we will create our look with a layer mixer and I will explain it later while doing the process and then the vignette node and outside node and we will do the sharpening and then we will add some grain. Now let's start the process with the conversion node. Now we need to convert the color space. As you might know, this was shot in HLG3. So we are going to convert the color space using the color space transform. And for the input color space, this is, it was shot in REC BT2020. So the color space is REC2020. And input gamma was REC2100 uh, uh, HLG. And for the output, we are going to output for Rec 709. And for the output gum also, as I said in my last color grading tutorial, I'm using the Cineon film log, which gives me a really flat look and gives me much more room to play uh, in the other steps. And for the uh, gamut mapping, I will uh, use saturation compression to compress any high saturated color, which gives me a better result. We do not have any high saturated color here, but I always use that option. Now for the lift and gamma and gain, I will start to play with my uh, footage to uh, get a decent contrast. I will start with the lift. I will uh, decrease the lift. And I will play with the gamma. I want to create a moody, moody look. I don't want my picture to be so bright. So my mindset is a dark and moody look here. And I do not want so much saturation for this look, so I will decrease it. I want a neutral look here. And after that, uh, I do not do anything so much here. And after that, I will do the HDR node. For the HDR node, I want to uh, decrease the level of these blown uh, highlights because it doesn't look so much cinematic. So I, we will use the log wheels here. And I want to just decrease the level of those highlights. And I want to increase the range a little bit so I do not affect my subject. I just want the higher end of the waveform for this to affect. And I will just increase it a little bit and then decrease the highlights to get a beautiful roll off here. We do not have much bl blown highlights and the highlights become real beautiful this way. And it's much nicer as you see if I enable and disable this, you see that it looks and looks and feels much more cinematic in this way. And after that, you can even decrease it more if you like. It depends to your liking. And after that, we will move to the look node, to the layer mixer to create our look, which is the most important part of this uh, color grading process. So before adjusting the look node, I will start with my skin node. Uh, as you might know, in the layer mixer, the lower layer is the layer which is the ex excluded one. For example, when we select the ex skin in the lower layer, it means that we are excluding the skin and whatever change we make here, it won't affect the skin and the hair of the model and our subject would be excluded. So let's start with selecting the skin. I will start by selecting the skin here. I will pick my qualifier and select the skin. I will add some of the colors which are not selected. Now let's see what we have got here. We need to increase the range. You see that we have a little bit of junk here. It's natural because we have 8-bit footage and we do not have a great color, color accuracy. So we, we have to deal with it somehow. Uh, I will increase and play with the saturation as you see here. 
I want most of the subject to be selected and now let's play with the luminance and here is the luminance let's play with the hue to see if we get more of the hair and I think it's good and uh, now let's uh, give it some denoise because as I said this is a 8-bit footage and we have so much junk here we need to denoise it I denoise it, uh, denoise it so much and I sh should mention that you should give this so much blur uh, in order to avoid any artifacts here because we are going to push this uh, look node so much and make it darker so we need to avoid any problem here I will uh, push it so much give it so much blur now I will uh, leave this for now and now <clears throat> I will move to the look node uh, to create that dark and moody look as I said here for the look node, I will start by uh, decreasing my offset. You will see that as I decrease my offset, the jungle becomes more dark and I will continue doing this. I will do this so much as you see we are getting a really dark jungle here, which looks really moody. But as you see, the subjects uh, become so bright uh, when you compare it and we should fix this in the skin node. I'm just decreasing the offset here to make the jungle really dark. And for the uh, also, uh, the jungle in my opinion is so saturated. So I want to decrease the saturation of the greens. So I'm going to decrease the saturation to 20. As you see, it becomes those dark moody greens. And also I want to give it some gain to add some contrast because we lowered the brightness so much we need to give it some contrast and here is for the jungle and now uh, I move to the skin node uh, to fix some of the problems like the contrast and the brightness of the subject to match the environment. Now for the skin node also which is a subject and the hair, face and the hair. I want to decrease the offset like we did for the jungle, but not that so much. So I start to decrease the offset until I find the greatest spot which matches the, matches the subject to the jungle. And then I will leave it there. I will just do this until I find a great spot. I think now there is a good... Uh, contrast between the subject and I will leave it around here I think it's good as you see but uh, after that you see that again my subject is really uh, saturated uh, uh, in comparison with the jungle so we need to decrease the saturation here too but not not that so much like we did for the jungle I decrease the saturation here now as you see it made a lot a lot of difference and it matches really better with the jungle and also i want to use the, the sat versus sat feature to again decrease some of the saturation saturated parts in the dark areas <clears throat> the as you know the we have a little bit of saturation in the hairs i want to decrease it a little bit so i will put a point here and decrease a little bit of saturation as you see again this makes a lot of difference as you see if you can see it it blends really better with the jungle if you do not know about this sat versus sat uh, here is our uh, uh, less saturated areas and here is our the most saturated areas if I want to show you an example here I have, I have brought this uh, here uh, we have uh, a really saturated red and less saturated I created this in Photoshop these are all in the same brightness level but the saturation is different so if I create a point here and decrease the saturation you will see that the most saturated color will be less saturated and if I bring this a little bit to the middle you will see the difference better it affects the highly saturated areas in the right section and if I move the left section you will see that it first affects the less saturated colors so here in this tutorial uh, we will see that uh, by putting the because the most of the picture is really less uh, is not much saturated we do not have anything here as you see the most of the 
histogram is here so I will, I will just decrease a little bit of saturation from the left side so we get a more balanced picture with the jungle and after that we should check that if our mask is good or not when I should play it to see if we see any artifacts and if we see any artifacts we should fix it now let me bring this back and play it to see if we see any artifacts let's see the picture looks clean uh, even if we haven't used the noise reduction I see a little bit of artifacts here sometimes but I think when I apply the noise reduction they will be gone and uh, let's uh, add some noise reduction here to see how this affects you should have the studio version uh, to have this feature but again you can skip this part but this makes a lot of difference and it is really worth it I will add some luma in the tem temporal and only the chroma in the spatial and let's see how this affects our mask you can see that we have those junks but we do not see them we do not see any artifacts while playing the uh, movie so our selection is good even if this is an 8-bit foot, eight footage this shows the power of the Vinci Resolve how great you can get a good picture of 8-bit uh, footage which is really awesome you can also let me disable this noise reduction it makes the uh, system really uh, slow uh, you can also play with this mask again with the in and out ratio if you see that the mask is not blending well with the subject as you see when I decrease this the masks uh, ratio goes a little bit in and you will see less uh, artifacts around the subject you see that if I decrease it it blends really better so try to play with these options they are really good you can achieve really good results by playing with these options and as you see we have a clean mask and if I check the before and after till now you will see that we came in so much and made a lot of difference we can also <clears throat> play with the contrast of the model again I will change. you see that if I bring down the lift a little bit down the contrast becomes more logical we have the it matches the trees and before that it didn't a little was a little bit faded but now when i decrease it i think it blends so much better with the environment and i think we have a great result here for the layer mixer and now let's move to the vignette node for the vignette node as as always i will use the uh, power window here i will create a power window and i will give it some softness and i will invert it you will see that we have selected the round of the subject and now let's decrease the brightness to achieve a vignette effect I will decrease the brightness not so much because the jungle is dark itself but it really affects the mood as you see if I bring this back you will see that the vignette effect just brings back brings uh, so much more attention to the subject and now in the outside node also i want to add some punch to the center of the image so we have much more attention this brings much more attention to the subject as you see here if i bring some we, br we brought some pop to the subject as you see now if I disable and enable both of them, you will see that it made so much difference here. Now for the sharpening node, I will use the sharpening feature. You will see the eyes. I brought them. I zoomed on the eyes to see the better uh, picture. We will go to the sharpen and start adding some sharpening by decreasing. As you see, by decreasing, we add so much sharpness to the eyes, and it makes so much difference. Became, the picture becomes so much sharper I do not I don't know if you can see it on YouTube but it affects uh, so much I do not do this a lot because uh, you can again depends on your liking but I only keep it on uh, 47 and I feel it is really good and uh, enough now for the grain node I want to add grain to make this uh, footage much more cinematic I will add the film grain effect and I mostly use the 35mm 400T and just uh, 
change the grain strange to a, to my liking it depends on your taste what you want and you can check it the before and after it makes so much difference it gives that character and the cinematic feeling uh, and i really like the grain in some of my works and i really use it and here again we can once again watch the full before and after we made it so much more cinematic and dark and i really like this dark look and i really hope you enjoyed this color grading tutorial let's watch the before and after once again and i will see you again after that Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this cinematic color grading tutorial and you learned something new. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comment sections. And also do not forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel because that would be highly appreciated and would help me to create and push more content to you. Thank you so much for watching and I will be seeing you in my next videos.